the National Space Centre, we're excited to be installing our latest artefact, the Gemini TTV2. This fantastic object is the only Gemini capsule on display outside of America. Whenever you're moving an object like that, you need to take a great deal of care, not just because of its scale and size, but really because of its historic significance. The Gemini TTV2 is the largest and most significant object that we've brought into the Space Centre since we opened. It's been a, a big challenge to get it here. It's been over a year since we first found out that there was a chance for us to display this object. It's on loan to us from the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in America, and it's an important object with a really interesting backstory. For most of the general public, Project Gemini tends to get overlooked in the gap between Mercury and the Triumph of the Apollo missions, but it was an absolutely critical program if the Americans were successfully to achieve their goal of getting a man on the moon. Project Mercury had shown that Americans could get into space. Project Gemini was about testing the critical technologies and the critical methodologies that were all going to be essential if Project Apollo was going to be successful. During the Mercury program, the design was for the capsule to parachute into the ocean, but that creates all sorts of logistical nightmares. And so when NASA looked at the opportunity of having a land landing system, they realised that this could cut a lot of corners in terms of logistics and make things much more easy to facilitate. NASA decided to develop an idea from engineer Francis Regallo. His concept of an inflatable rigid wing, somewhere between a kite and a parachute, would turn the craft into a paraglider that could be safely piloted to the ground. During most of the mission, the wing would be stored within the capsule itself. Upon re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere, a heat shield would protect the capsule before a drag parachute would be released to help slow the capsule enough for the wing to be deployed. By the time the craft had dropped to around 20,000 feet, it would begin to act like a paraglider. The pilot would control the craft and perform a landing manoeuvre to safely reach the ground. The irony is that by the time our Gemini TTV was conducting its test flights, the fate of Paraglider had been sealed. It was ultimately successful, but unfortunately by the time they'd proved the concept, the space that would have been needed for the, the wing, for example, would have been occupied by other crucial elements that they needed to put inside the spacecraft. So although Paraglider died a death, the lessons that we learned expanded our understanding of aerodynamics and led to some serious proposals for the future of Project Apollo. It's been a big challenge. We always knew that there were certain issues we would have to overcome. Firstly, we knew that it was too large to actually get into the building. So we would have to dismantle part of our building to make a hole big enough to get it to where we want to display it. Secondly, we wanted to put it back into its natural environment. It is a flying vehicle, and by displaying it suspended from the ceiling, hopefully our visitors will get a real sense of just how death-defying and dangerous this vehicle was. The National Space Centre has an internationally significant artefact collection and this is a great new addition to it, perhaps the best addition we've had since we've been open. But we're always looking for new stories to tell, new artefacts uh, within which we can explain those stories to our visitors. We want people to come back and visit us and think there's a good chance that the next time they come they'll see something new and something else that's exciting.